Well, we are in this series, the book of Numbers, and today we're going to look at Numbers chapter 5. Now, just to have a quick recap, remember we started off, I introduced to you that the Hebrew title of the book of Numbers is the word Bar Midbar, which means in the wilderness. Now, this word is taken from Numbers chapter 1 and verse 1, where it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness, there you have it, Bar Midbar, of the Sinai, in the tabernacle of meeting. So the book of Numbers really records the journey of the children of Israel in the wilderness, how they came out of Egypt from slavery and they were on their way to the promised land. Now their journey here on this, uh, their journey in the wilderness really speaks to us of our journey here on this earth. Because Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, that these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So just like the children of Israel in the wilderness, in this life there will be tribulation. But we are to be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. So if we want to navigate successfully and overcome this wilderness of life, we have to glean from the wisdom and the revelation from the book of Numbers. Now last week, we looked at Numbers chapter 4 and we learned that a consistent message throughout the Old Testament that is being communicated to God's people is that the closer we get to God, a greater degree of holiness is required. So as we come near to the presence of God, the greater our consecration. Because the God whom we serve is a God who is both transcendent and imminent. Now, Isaiah 57 verse 15 says, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. So notice God inhabits in eternity. He is holy. He is the high and lofty one. But yet, he said this, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So yes, God is holy. He is supernatural. He is supreme. He is transcendent. But yet, He wants to dwell with His people. He wants to dwell with those who are contrite and humble in spirit because God is an imminent God. So this formed the heart of the book of Numbers, that a holy God dwelling in the midst of His people. He is a holy God, but yet He wants to come and dwell amongst us. First, dwelling in the pilgrim camp in the wilderness. And ultimately, one day, He will be dwelling in the midst of Israel in the promised land. So God is holy. As such, His people must be holy. Because an unholy people who come in contact with a holy God will be consumed by His wrath. And if they continue to be unholy, He must either abandon them or destroy them altogether. But because God loves us, God will not give us up. He will not let us go. That is why last week I shared with you, Jesus came. Jesus became our answer. He took the curse upon Himself that we may live so that we can come near to the presence of the Most Holy God. That's why when the adulterous woman encountered Jesus, Jesus told her, neither do I condemn you. But he didn't stop there. He went on to say, go and sin no more. Because he is still holy. There is a demand for continual obedience to God. So the way of life is always the way of obedience to God's instruction. The way of life is always the way of obedience to God's instructions and commands. You see, His commandments are the way to life and blessing. His commandments are the wisdom of God revealed to us for our benefit. 
so that we can come into a covenant relationship with God. You see, the book of Romans tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse, 16, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. You see, all have sinned. And as a result, death came into our life. And we all are in the company of living dead, touching one another, defiling one another all the time. As a result, we are unfit for the presence of God, only deserving permanent exclusion from the camp to be put outside. We cannot help ourselves because each time we try to do good, we keep doing the bad thing. Just like what Romans 7 says, Paul says this, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. And he said in verse 24, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Because there is this sin nature, this body of death that we inherited from the first man. As a result, we can try to change our behavior, but the wrong desires keep coming, coming back again and again. Because friends, more than the outward acts or behavior, the most fundamental problem of human being is on the inside, there is this body of death, this sin nature that needs to be dealt with. It keeps tripping us up. It's, it keeps stumbling us. See, like the problem with a discharge, the person cannot simply just decide that he wants to come back into the presence of God. His problem got to be dealt with. He needed to be washed clean before he or she can re-enter the camp. Just like the leper, his skin problem got to be cleansed and made whole before he can come back into the camp of God. In other words, wholeness and cleanliness are needed before you can re-enter into God's presence. But like Apostle Paul, very often we cry out to God, but God, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I try, but, but it keeps coming back. You know what? You are right because we have no power to save ourselves. We need a miracle. That is why verse 25 Paul went on to say, I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. You know what? The answer is Jesus. The answer is Jesus. Only Jesus can deliver us from this body of death and wash us clean and set us free from this power of sin that's keep tripping us up. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is why when you read the gospel, in his earthly ministry, Jesus would often touch the unclean. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? In Luke chapter 8, it says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, what's that? Discharge of blood. It is a realm of death. This woman is unclean for 12 years. She was being put outside the camp, most probably. She must have been isolated, rejected by, his com by her community. But this day was different. This woman, the issue of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately, her blood, her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? You know what? From the perspective of the book of Numbers, this was extremely dangerous act because you are an unclean person. You cannot touch the Holy One. You will, you will be put to death. An unclean woman was deliberately touching the Holy One of Israel. You know what? She ought to have avoided the crowd altogether. She ought to have alienated herself and shouldn't be in the company of the Israelites. 
but she did the unthinkable. She mingled around the crowd, in the crowd, crawled up to the behind Jesus and touched the helm of Jesus. No wonder Jesus stopped, turned around and demanded to know who touched him. I tell you, most of us were thinking the woman got healed and she's celebrating. No, she was not celebrating. In fact, Luke says that she was trembling. It says in verse 47, And when a woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling. Why? Because she was trying to hide herself. She was supposed to be isolated, hiding herself from the community, but she came around community because she wants to be healed. So now she cannot hide herself. She was trembling because the next thing most probably will happen is that she will be judged and be struck dead. But thanks be to God. Look at verse 48. It says, And Jesus said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, the answer is Jesus. Jesus, only Jesus can set us free from this body of death and break the power of death, the realm of death in our life. And Jesus told her, your faith has made you well. The word well is the word sozo, which means make whole spirit, soul and body. You know what? Jesus did not reject the unclean. Jesus did not reject this woman with the issue of blood. Instead, she, he healed her spirit, soul and body. And as I was growing up, what was worse still was that I had a kidney problem when I was young. I had to take a lot of medication, and my whole body swelled. I became a super plus, 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 super plus, plus size. I was huge. In the whole primary school, six levels, primary one to primary six, I was the second fattest boy in the whole school. I lose to one. He, he champion, I am. <laughs> but I was huge. But when, during those times when I was huge, People laugh at me. They will call me names. They, they will curse at me. They will call all kinds of stuff. They reject me. They, oh, they will laugh at me. I become a laughing stock in a school. My surname was Chao Zhao. And they call me Fei Zhao. Whole school knows me as Fei. Because I'm Fei. I mean, surname is Zhao. Fei Zhao. That's my name. They call me. Just recent years, just recent years, I was on the street. I met one of the primary school friends. She he was walking across uh, over opposite the other side. And when he, he came close, he looked at me and said, You, fade out! I said, Open your eyes now. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> well, this was my name. I was huge. They called me names. I feel so rejected. Because of the, the size, the, 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 there's a girl that's sitting next to me, always like to pinch me. Pinch, I always go home with blue blacks everywhere. I told myself, you know what? All the girls in this world are terrible. I'm not going to marry anymore. But I changed my mind. But I tell you, during those times, I feel so down. I have to prove myself that I'm, I'm somebody that's useful. So I work very hard in my studies. I try to prove that, hey, you know what? I'm somebody, man. So I work hard. And then, and then I will join sports. But every time I go for the sports day, my teacher will assign me to throw the short part. <laughs> because during that time, my, my arm, my bicep is, th is thicker than most people's thigh. You know? It's no challenge. I take the iron ball. Anyhow, throw always go. Premier 3, go. Premier 4, go. Premier 5, go. No challenge. So by Premier 6, I told myself, I'm not going to do that. For what? I say, that's, all just, that's just proving that you are big in size. No, I said, I'm going to run the 100 meter race. So I told my teacher, I'll run 100 meter. And so he, she said, okay, then you got to go for the preliminary rounds, the hits, and then qualify yourself. So I went. Now, the qualification is like that. During the hits, if you come in first, second, third, you can qualify for the finals. So I joined. I represent the red house, the red house. So you have red, green, blue, yellow. So I represent the red house. That day during the hits was a funny day because on the first lane was a short and I was a thin and tall guy. Then second lane, no, thin guy. Then there's a 
Third lane, a big round ball. No. <laughs> when the horn went off, boom, I tell you, I ran as fast as I can. I was so fast, I was like a bowling ball rolling down the alley. <laughs> and you know what? That day, I came in number three. I tell you, I was so happy. So I came right to the teacher who is a representative or who is leading our house. I said, church, church. You know, when we are Singaporean, we call our teacher church. I said, church, church, church. I came in number three. I can represent Red House for the finals. My teacher looked at me and said, ah. She said this, fat child. <laughs> Means fat child, right? Fat child. 100 meter race is not for people like you. Not because I cannot run that day because of my size, she kicked me out of the finals. I went home once again. I tell myself, you know what? Because maybe because of my physical condition, my upbringing, nobody wants me. And that's it. So I decide to withdraw myself, close myself, don't talk to people. By the time I come to secondary school, I became a very withdrawn boy. But deep down and inside, rejection, rejection and shame is eating me up. I don't know what to deal with it. I want to come out with it, but it's pushing me down, pulling me back. And it's stumbling my life again and again, doing things that I don't want to do. Until I came to church. And when I became a Christian, I remember one time, I was praying with a small little group of people, just three of us, we were praying. It's a prayer meeting. After prayer, after prayer, suddenly, one of the sisters turned over to me and laid hands on me. And she just said this word. She said, Jesus was there. And when she said it, I start crying, crying. I cry like a cow. <laughs> I cry and cry and cry and cry. They were shocked. I said, what happened? Because what they didn't know was that as she said that, suddenly the Lord brought me back all the way to when I was a little boy in kindergarten in my uncle's house. It was a, it was a day after school. The day after school, my auntie forgot to, came and he, she forgot to come and fetch me. And the, the, the teachers start shutting the door the children were left, all the children, kids left, all the teachers, the teachers told me, say, you stay here, auntie will come, we go first. And everybody left. And I was a small boy, standing outside, waiting for auntie, auntie didn't come, she forgot. And I started crying, I was left alone, cast away, forgotten. I cried and cried that day, but you know what, actually my auntie is just across the street. Because my, my, my grandparents have a shop across the street, but there's a big road I, I don't dare to cross. I start waving. I, oh, 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 oh. But nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. I was so broken that day. But the Lord brought me back to that day. But then in a vision, when the sister said the Lord was there, I saw Jesus coming from behind this little boy, hugging me and say, I was there. I was there. You know what? I realized even before I am saved, while I'm yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Took the defilement. I don't deserve to be in His camp. I deserve to be cast away. I deserve to be the one that's hanging on the cross. I deserve to be the one that carry the shame, stripped naked, body like rotting leper, walking the streets of Jerusalem where people will cast stone and shouting, unclean, unclean, crucify him, crucify him because I deserve it. I deserve to be the one that's outside the holy city of Jerusalem crying out, Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I took all that so that I can say, Jesus, and when I call his name, he is there to 
Hug me. Assure me. Touch me. Heal me. Set me free. Break the power of death and brought me right back into the holy presence of God.